Hey geeks, this is Super Geek Heather Brainerd from New York. When I'm not dreaming up excuses to book random trips to Disney, I like to go geeking on Walt Disney World with Kurt, Lindsay, and the whole geeking family. Hey, Disney World Geeks, Curtis Stone here, and welcome to episode 406 of the Geekin' on Walt Disney World podcast. This week, my good friend Liz Cody joins me to review her trip to Disney World. Well, do you like restaurant reviews and food descriptions? (laughs) I have a couple of those that have joined our private Facebook group say they want to hear more food descriptions and restaurant reviews <laughs> as if we don't do enough of them that's what we like to do here this episode is full of food talk almost the whole thing because it's like an adult trip with liz and her husband down to disney world i've been having fun chatting with people like liz and other disney world fans and geeks for over seven years if you're new to the podcast welcome over seven years ago i started the podcast with my daughter Lindsay. We began by talking about our Disney World trips, and we brought on you, the listeners, the Disney geeks, to tell their trip stories, and you guys are just so positive, caring, and generous. I love the geek and family and the Disney community. We encourage a family atmosphere here on the podcast, and before too long, they were calling me the podfather, and I continue to bring you, the listeners, on to tell your stories all about Disney World, and we'd love for you to join our geek and family. We've got an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin' on WDW family. You'll get a few questions that I ask there, and I'll get you in there as soon as I can, and then you'll be able to share your trip pictures and engage with one of the best groups on the internet talking Disney World every single day. We are independent Disney authorized travel agents with Fairy Tale Concierge. We'd love to be your Disney travel guides, and you can book your room and your dining reservations with Mama and Auntie Judy. The best way to contact them is through their email, travelintieras at gmail.com. And my gosh, they have been busy. So thank you so much, all you geeks who book your trips and ask all your questions and get help from Mom and Auntie Judy. We certainly do appreciate you. And thank you so much for trusting us to be your travel guides down to Disney World. (laughs) It's the part of the show where we're going to bring on the travelintieras. We're going to talk to the Traveling Tierras. Hey, Mama hey, Judy. Hey, Geeks. How are you? Yes, Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Judy. How you doing? Doing great. Another rainy Sunday afternoon. It's been raining all week, it feels like. It's yeah. up here in Connecticut. We're recording late today. We are yeah. coming in wheel screaming. I got to get this out, guys. You got to keep me up okay. late. Uncle we'll be, Bumpy we'll was going to mow the lawn today, but it was raining, so he yeah. didn't. Well, yeah. our backyard is like a swamp. When you walk through it, your feet sink down. Yeah, our driveway's like a lake. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. <laughs> I want to have them answered immediately. Yes, I've been dying to ask you a bunch of questions, Mom and Judy. Yeah. All right. Immediately. The big news this week, I think, is lots of things opening up down in Disney World, especially resorts. Can you get me caught up on what's opening up down there? Oh, the big one is Port Orleans French Quarter in Riverside. Yeah. It's fantastic. I, I was switching lions this morning, and when I got to the cast member, she said, Oh, my goodness, it's so wonderful to finally be able to book at French Quarter. Yes. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. That yeah. is a geek and favorite. It sure is. Excited for that. Yes, need, yeah. need that. How about the rest of Port Orleans? Riverside's oh. opening, too. Both yeah. sides are opening. Yeah. Oh, yep. Outstanding. All right. Wasn't there more news about resort openings? Sure. Well, all the All-Stars. Yeah, we'll be fully operational by December. Yep, fully open. Resort-wise speaking. Was that all the <laughs> resort openings? <laughs> Must be more. Yeah. 
Well, no, the, the, mon- the poly is opening, but the monorail is still not finished. So yeah. Well, you're going to yeah. hear my friend Liz Cody, who stayed there. She was a little bit disappointed in that. I got to tell you, I asked the question out in our Facebook group. Would you stay in a resort that was under major renovation? Right. And maybe if they gave you a little discount, what do you think, guys? I guess you can answer that question. Would well, you yeah, stay yeah. away from it or would you give it oh, a shot? I'd stay there. Yeah. I'd stay there if yeah. they gave you a good deal or throw throw you a couple of gift cards or something or free yeah. meals or something. I would definitely. All right. But, well. um, we don't have a date yet for the main entrance or the monorail coming back oh. into service. Um, as, not as yet. I've heard it will be October 1st. Everything's October 1st <laughs> yeah. now. The generic <laughs> October 1st. Yeah, right. The big and, reveal. Uh, oh. 50th yeah. anniversary. Yeah. All the Moana-inspired rooms are open at the Poly, or will be open on July 19th. So hmm. that's that's big. Yeah, that is. That's exciting. And they're renovating the rooms at um, the Contemporary. Oh, right. Incredibles theme. Incredibles, yeah. All right. Well, that is one of my favorite resorts on property, if not my favorite. So it would be great when it's done. But this was the biggest news. I was really surprised when ohana oh, i wonder what it could be oh. right? no i could have can i guess what it is Curtis has been waiting my favorite restaurant has it's open now right yes yes it, it opens on the ninth. that's the good that's news mm-hmm. what are the best oh, good news i know you guys have been watching all the reviews and people talking about that have I'm already gotten in there to eat everything yeah what do you, mom you've been looking through what's been yeah. The consensus? I don't think there is a consensus. No, there isn't really. It's it's some of the bloggers really weren't happy with certain elements. Those same elements on other blogs, they loved them. I really feel it's going to be, you know it's going to be different because the skewers aren't being offered right now. But go in with an open mind and, and find out for yourself. That's That's what my advice is. So, um, I was reading a review and they said that the new biscuits are actually very good. Right. And another reviewer said they really dislike them, the cheddar cheddar biscuits. Then they also have that papaya coconut scone or scone, right? right. And they said and the cheddar people like also those. have uh, jalapeno in them, which makes them mm. a little spicy. Yeah. yeah. And some reviewers said they were a little dry. Other people said they were perfect. I mean, I guess it could be a little bit of your personal taste and a little bit of how maybe, you know, that batch was prepped that came to your table. You got to go try it. Geeks, listeners, go try it yourself. It, it, it really sounds pretty decent to me. I wouldn't hesitate to go. Yeah, and they said they, the reviewer I was reading said the kielbasa is actually very tasty. Yeah. That's good. However, they felt the shrimp casserole that the shrimp was flavorless, the cheese was watery, and there was way too many breadcrumbs. Yeah, and, not, and another reviewer said that the casserole was reminiscent of a delicious mac and cheese, except <laughs> in place of the, the noodles, you got big, huge shrimps in there, plenty for everybody. It was creamy, delicious. I mean, you get both sides of it. it's. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. It's you got to go try it yourself. Right, and this one said that the shrimp were tiny little, like frozen shrimp that you'd put into a salad. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So it was interesting. Were they eating at the same place? Yeah, <laughs> you know. But they said the noodles were delicious. You know what? That's a hundred percent consensus that the noodles yep. were the bomb, the diggity bomb. Everybody loved the noodles, and they haven't changed them. And the so wings, that the wings good. were just as good as they always are. Uh huh. And they liked they liked the um, the dumplings. They liked garlic sauce on the dumplings. Well, I know who's got a problem with not being offered any sauces. If you guys haven't heard, <laughs> they're not go. offering the peanut sauce and the sweet and sour sauces anymore. Even if you ask for them on the side, they kind of say, nope, we're not offering them. So I know Curtis is heartbroken about that. That's probably my biggest disappointment. I know. I, mean, I, I think they'll be back before too long, even if it's just by request, because I feel like a lot of people, me especially, I dipped everything in those sauces or oh, I poured I a little of the sauce on everything, not just. In- well, you know, the, the Disney fans 
got them to go from the fried rice back to the noodles. Absolutely. Maybe we can get them to bring the sauces back. Yeah. Yeah. And I get it. One of the blogs said it was due to allergy reasons. Make it a requestable thing. You know, if, if you don't want to put it on the table, not knowing if you're not knowing that this family has allergies or not, you know, make it requestable yeah. or ask if you want it. And, and bring the it price out. for this meal is adults is 55 and children is 33. Plus tax and gratuity, of course. Right. Well, I want to do it for Geek and Recon. Okay. Oh, well, when I go in September, I'm going to give it my best shot. All right, yes, Judy. we are. Try for a re, uh, reservation. I'll trust oh, hey, Judy. Judy's Judy review. Curtis. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know that the breakfast opened up also? I saw that. And it sounds delicious. It does. $25 a plate. Not bad for everybody. Get your Mickey and your Stitch waffles. Yep. Your pineapple coconut sweet bread. Your and fruit. Good. Yeah, that looks really good, too. I think I'd like to try that for a late breakfast, maybe at some point and mm-hmm. make it almost like lunchtime, you know? Yeah, that would be good. I think we got to put that on our list. Very good review of that. Now, I want to give a shout out to Christine Dunn Fowler. <laughs> Christine, this is a topic mom and I have been talking about this week. She had a, <laughs> see, a listener and... A potential client that has been de- debating with their family, going back and forth about on-site or off-site. She, Christine says that's her biggest challenge when planning a Disney World vacation. So, let me see. I'll ask Judy this time. Is that a big challenge for you, Judy, whether to go on uh, Let me think. No. <laughs> I, always, even back in the day, uh, 50 years ago, it has always been on-site. <laughs> Even when you went camping, right? Even, oh, you know, the campground is great. If you're a camper, it's easy transportation to get to the Magic Kingdom. It's it's just the whole thing of staying on site, I think, is ease in getting around because you park your car or get off your bus or your Uber, and you never have to get in it again till you go home. And you let Disney take care of it. Oh, yeah. That's... That is the biggest convenience in the world. Oh, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think I was telling mom, for me, you know, when people are looking to do, a, they're looking to save money by staying off site. Now, it, it used to be really easy to do kind of a cost comparison because you could talk about the free transportation, the parking, and other bonuses that you would get as an on site guest. You know, when it comes right down to it for me, it's like when you drive in underneath those arches for Mickey and you are in those purple street signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're there. There's you're just you're there. You're there. Yeah. It's just a huge re- relaxation thing for me. And yeah. then hearing the music inside of the resorts, the the theming of the resorts, the service, and just what we call the bubble. And I, and I understand, you know, when mom and I first went, we stayed at what we called the downtown Disney resorts. And we went there because of costs. It was only like a hundred dollars a night at the time. But then, yeah. then we made the next move was to the Polynesian. <laughs> they were oh, like, okay. and you're spoiled. <laughs> it's like, why did we, you know, what took not, uh, I mean, it was just, yeah, I don't ever want to stay. I've never stayed off property. Yeah. So. Well, a lot of the other part of it, Curtis, is that people like to rent houses. Yeah, um, I understand. You know, not just to get a large house, group too. Houses, and they got a large group, and you know they'll have their own pool and whatnot. But you're still not in the bubble. You're leaving the bubble, and yeah, That's maybe a- you save a little bit of money, but you're also, are you really, Judy? <laughs> you know, you're I driving back and so. forth. Time is money in Disney World. And the other thing, my nephew just stayed off property. They had a very nice time, but they would get there early because we said, oh, you've got to get there early. They are holding people now at the toll plaza, and they're not even letting them into the parking lot until right before rope drop. So the people that are coming in from the resorts, whether it's on a bus or the Skyliner, they're going to be there for rope drop, but if you're coming in a car, you won't be. You're yeah. going to be behind everybody that's at the resort. And now they're starting on October 1st. They're going to let resort guests into the park 
30 minutes early. So you've right. got that little, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but 30 minutes you could accomplish quite a bit. In oh, minutes. yeah, you can. People will be pouring in the gates an hour after you, and it's still you still get a big jump for 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, it works okay. out more than that for sure. I'm, 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 As you know, advantageous for getting hitting some of the bigger attractions pretty early. Yeah. Well, did you guys know, I heard this long time ago, that the Orlando area, and if you think about this, it makes a lot of sense, the most accidents per capita in the entire world, <laughs> yes. car accidents that. occur. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah, do okay. not. I, um, you know how I am. Down there. Yeah. yeah. Lindsay said it was constant. She saw tourists jumping the medians, driving across, trying to get across the highways and just doing all kinds of crazy stuff on a day-to-day basis when she was living there and said it just was crazy on Disney property. And then, you get all property. Those, then you get all those crazy Brits that come that don't know how to drive on the right side of the road. Well, that's part of the thing is you got people from all over the world that don't know right. where they're going. Yeah. And have a little bit of a panic when they make the wrong turn. There's just so many things that can go wrong outside of the parks. I don't want to be there. So I yeah. want to be inside. I want other people driving for me, and I just want to relax. I mean, the speed that you can get to the in and out of the parks. You want to take a break during the midday. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. And to me, really, honestly, it's the feeling, right, guys? When you get in there and you're at that beautiful. You I mean, just want to be Disney, yeah. Disney, 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 twenty four seven. Yep. So you want the the pressures of life to just melt away because you're in the bubble, and that's the way. I, yeah. I, We've gotten used to it. We've never, I won't go unless I'm going to be staying inside the parks. Yeah. I mean, you come out of the park at night, you see the fireworks and you're exhausted and yeah, there'll be a line to get on the bus, but it goes fairly quick, but you get on the bus, they turn the lights out, they turn the air conditioning on. And I think everybody takes a little snooze. (laughs) Yeah. It's a good feeling. So much more relaxing. Great feeling. Yeah. I totally agree. So, yeah, that's our take on whether you want to stay on site or off site. Yeah. I have another little tidbit that I found online, but uh, Mama had told me about it. If you book a VIP tour with one of the plaids, they now include Rise of the Resistance as part of your tour. You do not have to get a boarding pass. All right. Isn't that great? Take yes. you right on it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and we can book those VIP tours for you. Yes, we can. You know, if you want to skip the lines, we'll set up an itinerary for you when you get down there. I mean, you pick the day that you want to go. You give us your information and we'll get that set up for you. But when you get down there, your guide will actually figure out what you and your gang want to do. What parks you want to see? You can do all four parks if you want. You know, it's a minimum of seven hours, a maximum of 10. The price will depend on kind of seasonal pricing or well, based on the time of the year, you know. And it can range around from $300 an hour. Yeah. And then, you know, at probably busier times, you're up over $500 an hour. But, hey, you can hit all four parks and do all the rides you want Basically, you know, with no, but, you know, you get a group of 10 people together from different families and you break the yeah. cost down and it's not that much for family then. You can, yeah, I think it's cool. Well, a little teaser. I am interviewing someone, one of our clients that did exactly that. I'm interviewing, yeah. I'm having them on the podcast. I'm interviewing them tomorrow. You'll hear it in a few weeks. Oh, can't wait. That'll I'm not great. telling you who it is yet. You'll have okay. to listen in. <laughs> later <laughs> i think we know you know <laughs> yeah, for instance, yeah we know all right i've got a hidden magic okay all right mom do you have anything i actually i have a little funny thing when i was looking at the new menus for the polynesian uh, for ohana and i actually like to look at alcoholic drinks you know being being that i like to drink alcoholic drinks <laughs> and i came across a drink called the puke punch. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I thought it said. Okay. <laughs> it's actually called the puka punch. <laughs> but I looked at it on the menu and I said, the puke punch. Are they kidding? 
And then I went, oh, the puka punch. Right, that, that. Much or different. Geeks, one of you go and get the puka punch and tell us how it is. <laughs> I just thought that was silly. That's funny. Har, har, har. <laughs> You may have to have that instead of your famous lemon drop. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I don't think I would like it, Judy, because it's got rum. I think it's got even 151 rum in it. I'm not a big rum fan. Oh, I like rum. That'll make you puka. <laughs> make That'll make you puka puka. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to continue with my hidden magic of the Walt Disney World book. This is from Susan okay. Venice. I am finally going over to Epcot, guys. In keeping with the spirit of the global community, the Innovations Plaza Fountain of Nations, which I don't know, that was that's all that area is under renovation, and I don't it's know what's gone. Gonna, yeah, Curtis, it's gone. It's gone, sadly. Well, uh, I thought, yes, I know, but it did contain water from rivers and bodies of water all around the world. They had a yeah. galleon. They had a gallon from each ha- having been added to the fountain on opening day as a gesture of peace and togetherness. That's lovely. I thought that was a cool. Isn't that the fountain that's out front, though, when you go in? No, it was the big one inside. With all the music? The where, the, where they jumped up, where the fountain jumped in. Yes. Uh, yeah, they, they used to run in music, and the fountain would make a, do a whole kind of show, remember? You would have thought that they might have saved some of the water. <laughs> <laughs> you think it was still in there from 1980? Yeah. Right. I think that fountain was a maintenance tr- trouble. It was my guess. Yeah. But. Could have been. All right. Just like the fountain that was at the Polynesian a long time ago. That was so nice, oh, though. It oh, was. That fountain. Oh, wow. Well, all right. Then I think we're done for this week. Short and sweet tonight, just like us. <laughs> yeah. Just like you and me, and Curtis. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, me too. Thanks, he's guys. Not short. He's not short. <laughs> yeah, you're the short one. I'm the sweet one. I don't know what he is. <laughs> Big and goofy. But I'm not the sweet one, too. We're both the sweet ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I'll see give you that. Work. I'll see you and talk to you next week. Okay. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, geeks. <laughs> All right, it's time to get into the featured trip report with my friend Liz. She did a split stay at the Riviera and Polynesian. I know she's a DVC owner at the Polynesian. That's how I got to meet Liz. She does give some critique, especially because of the construction at the Polynesian. And then we start getting into food, and it's like the whole episode. Flower and garden food details. Lots of details and great descriptions. Topolinos, Tiffins. And not just the signature restaurants, all her quick service descriptions, Crystal Palace, homecoming brunch, Kona for dinner and breakfast, Spice Road Table, you know, the place that keeps avoiding me. (laughs) She builds a droid. Oh, that wasn't even food related. (laughs) The Polite Pig, another place that I can't wait to get to real soon. My gosh, the food platter, the barbecue food that they have at the Polite Pig sounds really great. She really surprised me with her favorite lounge. We talk about all of her favorite lounges down at Walt Disney World. The Plaza Paddlefish. We finish up with La Hacienda San Angel. Well, Liz and I, we used to talk Disney World just about every single day as we commuted back and forth to work together. It's great to chat with her again. And you're going to love hearing all the food talk we got this week with Liz and and me. And we're going to geek out on Disney World. Well, it's always fun to have a day off from work, and I'm so excited. I got a coworker with me coming on. We've got some fun history together, so I mean, we haven't had a trip report with her in a long time. She is definitely is a super geek, and I used to talk to her practically every single day about Disney World, so I'm really excited early in the morning on a Friday to have her on the podcast, and so please give a warm geek and family welcome to Liz Cody. Hey, Keith. Hey there, Liz. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? So great to see you and talk to you. Yeah. It's, yeah, been, a, it's been a while. We used to see each other every single morning. 
I know we miss, I miss those bus rides oh, yeah. a little bit. Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> it was our, our time to chill out. We always had some fun Disney world. Well, I got, we got to tell the story how you and I met. It was okay. really interesting. I think I had started to work in Hartford and I, I bought a brand new car and I was like, I, I, I don't like commuting. I don't like driving into the city and I'm going to take the bus. I was probably taking the bus for like, Let's say it was like six months and you know that commuter face that you have on when you get on a bus going anywhere and everyone kind of stays to themselves and and I, I've always said I'm an introvert. I don't know about you, but I certainly am. And I remember one day I get off the bus, we're walking into work, and I just say, I'm I just got back from Disney World. And what did you say to me? Do you remember? Where did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, I don't know if we're gonna get this conversation perfect, but uh, I've, I've probably told you. I don't know, but that particular trip, I'm not sure where I said it, but I think you said, "Well, I, I think you just bought DVC at Polynesian." She goes, "I, I just bought DVC." Well, I mean that <laughs> I'm pretty smart, and I figured out that you're a geek <laughs> at that point. I said, "Really? You went? You bought a Polynesian?" Well. I do a podcast on Disney World. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then the rest is history, right? It is. We've had some good fun walks together and talking about all kinds about the podcast, about Disney World, our trips. And so mm -hmm. I've, I've loved our friendship over the last few years. Me too. Me too. It's been great. And now we get to stay connected this way because I don't live in Connecticut anymore. So. Well, the other funny thing was, it, may, it might have been in the same, I don't know, it wasn't that same conversation, but I support our intranet, the website internally for our, our company, and mm -hmm. which also includes our interest groups. And you one time, and I, I don't know if I was talking about dogs or something, we both have a love for animals. And, and our dogs. And he said, I started the interest group Woof, which is the, the dog sharing pictures. I think you got to be kidding me. That's like the most popular interest group we have inside the company. I think we broke the internet. <laughs> we, did, we did. <laughs> Don't worry about Wreck-It Ralph. We broke the internet ourselves, right, Liz? Yep. Yep. Sharing dog pictures. Uh, cool. So I'm so excited to go over a really long, cool trip I think you did here. Yeah, it was it was a really great trip. I feel like it was so long in the making because we my husband and I decided to take a, a quote unquote travel break in twenty nineteen. So we didn't go anywhere oh, wow. in twenty nineteen. And towards the end of that year I started making big plans <laughs> for twenty twenty. You know, I won't get into it too much, but that trip that was planned for, for May of 2020 was working out to be like the dream trip. Like just things were all aligning. I was getting tickets to, you know, like Disney after Magic Kingdom after dark and like yeah. just a lot of special events and, and everything. And then, you know, 2020 happened. The great unpleasantness um, as we call yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And rescheduled the trip three times in the hopes that that Disney was going to reopen. I missed the reopening by a week. And at that point I was like, I can't go through this emotional roller coaster <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. anymore. And we, you know, we're just like, we'll, we'll step we'll, back. Yeah. We'll step back. We'll try Disney again in 2021. Um, but it all worked out because we ended up coming to Gettysburg for vacation last year. And then, I moved here. You stayed. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting. So out. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So we, uh, 2021 was the, the long trip in, in the making. And I had a bunch of, of DVC points that I needed to use before I had to, you know, roll them into, uh, the separate pool. So awesome. I wanted to, to get a good trip in. So we know it was you and your husband, I think that went on the trip, right? Yes. Yep. Where did you stay? So we did a split stay, um, Riviera the first few days and then the Polynesian for the majority of the trip. Oh, Unfortunately, nice. because of a, a snafu <laughs> when I was changing the first part of the trip to the Riviera, um, and this was a snafu by the, by the DVC folks, um, we ended up having a split stay within the Polynesian, um, which was yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, those were the two main resorts. Those are two great resorts. Cause I, one thing I like doing with DVC, I don't know if 
you, I think others do this too. I like doing a split stay so you can do different parks or different resorts, but you can, with the Riviera, obviously you've got that side of the, the resort or the Disney world. And then with the Polynesian, you got all of magic kingdom. So I like that. Yeah, I, I agree. We love it because it, it affords us the ability to experience a lot of the other resorts, yeah. um, you know, while still having time at, you know, our home resort where, you know, we just, we truly do feel like we're at home yeah. and we definitely, or I should say, I definitely, cause I do all the planning, you know, tailor, the, 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 the schedule, the parks based on, on where we're staying. So sure. that we kind of have, we optimize the transportation. Exactly. We were, this was our first time at the Riviera and I was, we were thoroughly impressed there. Awesome. Um, we will absolutely stay there again. Yeah. We can't wait to get back there. We wish that we had, had been there actually longer than we were. How many nights and, at Riviera? Uh, three nights. Okay. Yeah. I, I will say, and, and this kind of breaks my heart a little bit to say, because I, I do love the Polynesian, but I strongly recommend people stay away from it for the foreseeable future. Uh, it was not a great experience. Ooh. Construction. So, they are under tremendous construction. When we were there, it was actually only open to DVC, and those were the only two buildings yeah. open. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, which we thought was going to be a really cool experience. Yeah. And uh, the what we what we learned, and and shockingly, was like the pools. Both pools were open. Huh. They were packed. Huh absolutely packed. Um, transportation there right now is a nightmare. Yeah. It's horrible. The monorail is non-existent right? and the buses are completely unorganized yeah, and unscheduled. Yeah. No, not even overwhelmed. Like they're just, we would be sitting there and there would be, I'm not exaggerating 10 magic kingdom buses in a row. Yeah. And, you know, there was times when we waited close to an hour wow. for the bus that we needed to like Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom. Mm. And even at the parks, we would we would have the longest wait waiting for the Polynesian buses. Wow. And it's just the it, it really was. In addition to that, like the, the quick service there, the Captain Cooks, they were still doing everything like maximum COVID safety protocols. So what yeah. I mean by that is nothing was self-service yeah. at all. all right. They were still doing like all of the drinks in the styrofoam cups yeah. and, and stuff. Whereas when we were at the Riviera the first few days... All of that was back to self-service. Oh, okay. Um, wow. And so it just, it made for these huge bottlenecks and, and quite honestly, a tremendous amount of waste because I had gotten the refillable mug and, you know, yeah. they're wasting these cups as I'm putting it in the refillable mug. It makes so. me so sad. You're making it me made, sad. It, it made me really sad too. And, and, but I do feel that it, and I don't like to focus on the negative, but I do think it's something important for the geeks to hear that it's what I would hate is for somebody to go there yeah, and have a less than, than great experience. I've heard someone recently say that that's normal, say they're going to stay, you know, it's our favorite resort, both you yeah. and I, I think. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's sad to hear. It is. It is. But all right, we won't focus on that. We're gonna, no. Let's get into the fun stuff. Yeah. What else is great about the Riviera? Oh, uh, just I would say all of the amenities that it offers, okay. I just think are tremendous. Um, the restaurants, whether you're talking quick service or Tapolino, so, you know, signature dining 
everything is just top notch and fantastic. The patisserie that they have there is amazing um, and has such a great selection. I love the way that they kind of switch over throughout the day. Like in the morning, they're serving breakfast pastries and, and coffees. In the afternoon, they switch over to dessert pastries. Um, the patisserie you know, is that cocktails. Patisserie, that's not their quick service then, right? You, you know, no. It's different. No, it's like so, a little side place yes gotcha yeah it's up on the main floor like off of the lobby and then they have this little fantastic like library seating yeah. area that's in behind the patisserie the quick service is phenomenal i mean honestly it's it's table service level quality wow that's awesome and then just the grounds, um, you know, they've got really fun stuff to be able to do outside with the, the games, the bocce ball, the mm. pools are great. They've got a quiet pool and a, you know, a more active kitty pool type area, which I was really impressed with the fact that people really kind of respected mm. the, the intent and the differences of the pools, which you don't always get mm. at other resorts. And then just the proximity, the bus service there was phenomenal. We never waited more than five mm. minutes for any of the buses when we did have to take a bus. And then the Skyliner, of course, you know, goes without saying that's right. just really great. Yeah. The location is yeah outstanding, right? When you think about yeah. it because of the yep. Skyliner for two parks. Yep. Even, even for the boardwalk. So like, the night that we went to Tapolino's for dinner, um, we wanted to get, you know, kind of cocktails b- before dinner. And we were going to just go to the lounge at the, the resort. And my husband's like, why don't we take the Skyliner over? It drops you right at the entrance to the boardwalk and we can go to Abracadabra. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. That's brilliant. And I mean, it was, and it was so fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, Cause you didn't have to do all the buses and all it. Like it was, yeah. it was a hop, skip and a jump. Kind of fun too. Go. Yeah. Right. You get to yeah. stay up high in the air and look. And I, I had that perspective of the reason of the property. I had no clue. Yeah. Like I was the first time I took that thing. I was like lost. Like, where am I? Where, where's this? Where's that? Trying to get my. The direction yeah it's yeah. uh it's really cool now that and riding behind ratatouille wondering when the heck they were going to open it up it looks done come on guys <laughs> <laughs> yep yep yeah uh, no, good stuff is. yeah boardwalk's always been a big favorite of mine what's some of your favorites liz i usually do an intro but ask people give me three fun facts about you and disney world can you on the quick without thinking mm-hmm. So my favorites would be, I would say, um, special ticketed events because I'm a brat. Um, <laughs> Spoiled brat. <laughs> Which ones do you miss? Oh, all of them, honestly. Um, yeah, aren't they fun uh, when they they put them up there and like the dessert, you like the dessert parties? Honestly, I've uh, never done any of the dessert parties, what? but you know, I've done the the wow. Mickey's Very Merry Christmas. I've done some yeah. of the behind the scenes tours, yeah, tours. Um, you know, any any of those things where you're getting a unique, specialized experience. And uh, oh, I tell you what, my favorite. We, you, did you hear me talk about the one we did at the UK Pavilion, the Rose and Crown? We had a fireworks dinner package mm. oh my gosh that was so awesome you got to do that or i i love i want them to do now that they're talking about the fireworks being back i want them to do the after hours they had like charcuterie board at, yeah. the, at the italy pavilion you know when the park's closing that kind of stuff yeah yeah all right give me another one what's another what's kind of one of your favorite snacks or meals or can i just say food festivals in general <laughs> I know, you like the festivals <laughs> Are they? What's your favorite festival? Because they're, I, I find they're all really good now. Like the food seems to be really good at all of them. You know, um, I say this with the caveat that it's been a long time, but food and wine has always held a really special place in my heart, and yeah. I do tend to like the the food offerings during the food and wine festival. It was the first. Um, yep. Yeah. 
the the caveat to that is it's been a few years since I've actually attended it and and flower and garden's pretty great. So. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the deep <laughs> All right, give me one more. All right. Um pool time. Really? Well, you're you're a weird geek. No, no, no. <laughs> you actually slow down sometimes when you go to I Disney do. World. You're not yeah. full stink the whole time. No, I yeah. mean, you know, it's it's weird. It's this groove that we've kind of fallen in because we get to the parks generally early in the morning. Yeah, you know, when the crowds start to kind of peak is when we're we're dodging out of them, and yeah. then we usually eat dinner late so then we've got like this sweet spot of a couple of hours in the mid-afternoon yeah i think that's even good for people to have kids i mean it's great for us adult goers Mm -hmm. i I feel the same way especially if it's hot i don't know if it was really hot when you were there but it was tremendously hot get out of the heat we were hanging the pool for a couple hours take a nap have a few drinks then go out when it's cooler at night that's yeah yeah, that's a good pattern i like that all right good job yeah a little applause from the audience. All right, let's talk food, Liz. I'm serious about food. It's a, right. an attraction when we go to Disney World, right? It is. It is. I'm going to go by day by day. What did you do for food the first day? First day, we hit a uh, flower and garden to start and we did a number of the of the booths <laughs> I like how you got um, the details here. Let's get into the details. All right. You got good um, notes. Yeah. You gotta take good notes, <laughs> so then you can think back on it. Are you it. talking into your phone all during this trip? No, I honestly, I take a, I take an old school notepad. Notepad, it's like my travel book. I take it for whenever oh, we travel okay. anywhere, and the when I'm having my coffee while I'm waiting for Matt to get ready each morning, I reflect on the day before. So all right. <laughs> Um, but oh. anyway, so the first day, uh, when we were at Flower and Garden, we hit Northern Bloom, yeah. um, and got the seared scallops and the beef tenderloin, which are I always just, fantastic. I just heard about these on the last trip report I did. Oh, they're so good. They're <laughs> so good. We actually, one of the other days that, um, we were at Epcot, we got second help things. Yeah. <laughs> Had to go back for it. You know, that's the hard yeah. thing about Disney World. You find something that you really like and you're like, you you can't help but go back to that. And it's hard to experiment sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Was it I mean, I think a big portion? They're yeah. fairly good size. What nice. we've finally learned um, is that we split them so then we can kind of do more okay. <laughs> rather than getting our own individual <laughs> servings experiment more all right yeah, exactly. i see some good drinks here yeah so then we hit the the uh citrus something i wrote blood but that's not right the citrus booth i got the orange lemon smoothie and the orange bird sipper because <laughs> i had to have this the sipper um <laughs> i know i know what i know all about that yeah <laughs> yeah tip for everybody hit that booth at the end as you're leaving ebcot because carrying around orange bird is just ridiculous <laughs> you didn't have and a bag to put him in he's big I finally had to get a bag to carry him in, and he's sticky. Oh, like, yeah. And I, I hate being sticky. Yeah, I mean, too. Um, right. He's so darn cute, though. He is. He is. I love that one. Um, I got to look at eBay, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good one. Um, and then we got the Meyer lemon poached uh, lobster salad, wow. uh, the citrus shortcake, and Matt got the Ismerelda uh, Beer Company Coconut Key Lime Ale. That sounds, ooh. It was really that good. Sounds, so I had a sip of that, and that it was good. it was like just enough yeah. of, of the like coconut flavor without yeah. it being right. obnoxious. Yeah, and beer, I like just a little hint of that, right? Yeah. I I. Yeah. I like that. Is that like a pale ale? I don't know. It was. Yeah, I like. The, it was. It was really. I like good. the IPAs and lobster salad. Of course, that catches my eye. It was good. It's 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 southern lobster. It's not Maine lobster, <laughs> um, so it is a little bit different. We are um, spoiled, aren't we? We are. <laughs> um, and for me, it was a little bit um, heavy on the the lemon flavor. Um, but it okay. was really, it was good. All right. 
Um, and then we hit up the Choza de Mar- Margarita uh, booth, which is not a festival booth um, in Mexico. And we got the uh, the the chips and guacamole, uh, the empanada de barbacoa. Uh, the I got the cucumber margarita with the chili lime salt rim, and Matt got the mango loco. Um, oh, margarita. I must. I steered you wrong. You, you didn't get what? the frozen lime margarita? You know, it's, <laughs> I usually, that's what I usually always Really? Um, Do you? But I saw the cucumber and I'm like, you know, like it was. Which is better, so frozen the, lime margarita or the cucumber with chili lime salt rim? <laughs> it, honestly, the original. Ah, um, see, the, see? The cucumber was good. It was refreshing. Yeah. But. I love teasing. I love best. teasing my guests about their margarita choice because mm-hmm. I love that ones. Yeah. You know, yeah. we go we go way back. Yeah. <laughs> they got so many choices now; it's like mind boggling. They do. I usually like the the kind of close to the original. Or, or yeah. the it's fun to experiment. I, yeah. I I just love teasing. That's just my thing. Yeah. Mango. I don't know. I that, you know it goes back to I can remember. The, remember the one? I don't know if they still have the one. It's got the multiple colors in it, and the, they they mix them up, you know, like a mm-hmm. rainbow. And yeah. I was like, "Wow, oh, that looks so good!" And I had it, and I went, uh-uh. "Nah, no. <laughs> I'm going back to the original." The mango was. I had a sip of that, and it was it was. I love good, mango too, but I wouldn't want a whole mm. like a whole drink of it. It yeah. was too sweet for me. <laughs> Well, Mexican um, Pavilion is always a favorite of ours, right? Yeah. I will. Um, so this was the first time that we went to that booth. Generally, yeah. we go to the quick service there yep. and get um, like my our food and drinks there. Yeah. But because of social distancing, ah. but the line was literally into <laughs> uh, China. Oh, my God. I was afraid you were going to say that. And and I'm like, yeah, well, I don't what like time? that much. It wasn't eleven wasn't ten thirty in the morning then? It was probably like twelve thirty. Yeah, see, I guess that's too late. One o'clock. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, every time we went, yeah. it's crowded. that's it, it, that's what the it's line popular. was. Popular. The booths didn't so take them was. away from the the famous spot for our margaritas. Nope. All right. Nope. You went over to Disney Springs for some drinks and dinners. We did after we hung out at the pool at the Riviera. Nice. Um, And so Disney Springs, that was just a really nice kind of like leisurely time. We strolled around. We hit Jack Jack Lindsay's for uh, cocktails and and a little light appetizer before dinner. Yeah. And then we had dinner at Raglan Road, which was just, it's always great, but it was uh, extra fantastic. You've been it's, there. Oh, that's good to hear. I oh, love yeah. We go all the time. I love a good Irish pub, especially one that's in Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad, so glad to hear this. It makes my, yeah. did you have some music going and dancers still? They had the dancers going. They had music going just like they always did. We were, you know, we had the luxury of social distancing. So yeah. there was a quarter of the tables uh, <laughs> that they're usually I'm glad you got in. Which was fantastic, yeah. Um, because you could actually see things and and kind of breathe. Yeah, it wasn't chaotic. Yeah, it can get crowded in there. I remember. I was. I've been in there when it's packed. Yeah. So what's yeah. so? Are you, I'm looking at your what you had there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. You know, I haven't had any breakfast yet. Liz. You know, you're really mean uh. to me. First thing on a Friday morning. <laughs> this is gonna get hard. I know as we go, right? Um, I'm gonna, I'm yeah, pro- I'm gonna get to this. Re- we're going up to the Berkshires for lunch up nice. towards Norfolk and where Judy, okay. you know. Yeah, I'm gonna be like scarfing. Yeah, I'm gonna be like mad, <laughs> mad hungry when I get there. <laughs> I like this drink flight you had too. Yeah, yeah. Matt Tell me, do you know what's in there? Flight? Yeah, um, Irish whiskeys, I'm sure. Yeah, and it was a special flight that they had going on. You know, for that period of time, our impression was that uh, it's not always that. And I want to say, like, I had posted something in the Geeking Facebook page, and I think it was Glenn, like, he did the flight and he showed, and they were completely different whiskeys. Yeah, I suppose, right? They kind of 
Maybe they do switch them up. Switch them yep. up, or ha- they have more than one, or just kind of one that they had in the menu. There was just the one, and like I said, yeah. it was a special. So oh. it included the Teeling's Black Pits Single Malt Peated Whiskey. Okay. Uh, the Teeling single grain whiskey and the Teeling single malt whiskey. Do they have years on them? You know, uh, that's. I remember I had one that was like it was a flight that had like Macallan, I think. You know, Scotch whiskeys or something, yeah. and they were like, you know, eighteen years, twenty years, and twelve yeah. years. I'm like, wow. It doesn't so, have the years in the descriptions. Yeah, that's okay. But knowing Teeling's. It's probably they're how they're fairly well aged. Yeah, I'm sure, no doubt. Very yeah. good. My 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 Lindsay came over last night and uh, she says, "What does Grandpa want for for Father's Day? We're getting together Sunday." I said, "You know, some Irish whiskey." But I think he would. You know, he does. He always buys yeah. cheap stuff for himself that he sips a little bit. I think in his garage. So get him a nice bottle of Irish whiskey. And she showed me what she got him. She goes, "I don't know anything about it," but I, I was like, "He's gonna love that." Yeah. There you go. And uh, it's too late for my Father's Day. I hope my kids get me a nice (laughs) sipping (laughs) whiskey. You know, I used to do this all the time. I'd ask my (laughs) my stepfather what he thought my grandfather would want. And that's what I would... And whatever he suggested is what I would actually end up getting him. Because normally we kind of, well, we do think about the other person. There's usually an element of the suggester would also want that. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you'll be getting some Irish whiskey. <laughs> put that out into the universe. There well, you go. I, I love this meal you guys had here. To describe what you got to eat. Sure. So I had the mushroom bisque to start. I love mushroom bisque. So whenever I see that, I have to get it. And it was, it was fantastic. To die for. All right. Yeah. And then I got the scallops with pork belly. That sounds really good. Oh, it was so good. Um, and Matt what? got one of their, their hamburgers. Yeah. Um, which he said was, was great. But the diver, sca- or the scallops with the pork belly was just, it was phenomenal. It was perfectly done. The pork belly was like super crispy, which I like. I don't like when it's just kind of, yeah, I don't know, not done. Well, I'm so um, glad you had a good meal at Raglan Road. All right. If we keep going at this pace, we'll be here till noon. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the next day. What was some good yeah. food on the next day? Yeah, so I mean, we had breakfast, um, fast service out of Primo Piata, which is the fast service for Riviera. What I'll just say is their food overall, yeah. which I've already said is phenomenal. Their servings are huge and very shareable. I like that. Um, so don't, and, and because it's kind of French Riviera based food, it's very rich. It's very heavy. Uh-huh. So that like also that makes it shareable. <laughs> <laughs> as well. I like a good breakfast. Yeah. Anything stand out for breakfast there for you? So out of all of the mornings that we had breakfast there, yeah. I would say my favorite was the crumble French toast bread pudding. <laughs> um, it, that It was just... What is it about bread pudding at Disney World? I would not share it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and their, their croque monsieur was... was what's, what's fantastic. That? So that's kind of like a, basically a, a Monte Cristo, if okay. you will. Uh, so it had the t- like really thick bread and then inside of it ham and, and like geez. a, like a cre- cheese sauce. Nice. And, um, oh, you're killing me. I, this it is was, be... it was phenomenal and egg and all of that. I want stuff. one of those right now. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I see. Well, oh, you did pick those bills. Yeah, How'd that so work lunch. out? Because that's always been one of my favorites. How yeah, was it that was really on your great. Trip? Oh, it good. was really great. Mobile ordering works out really fantastic, yeah. and and the food was solid there. It was oh, good. it was that it makes, was good. It was predictable. It was that makes me feel good. Mexican, yeah, it, it was good. <laughs> All right, yeah, we missed the the bar there, the toppings bar, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so it's been so long since I've been to Pecos Bill that I don't know that I missed the toppings bar, but I could see how people that are used to it 
go and, and miss it. It's something I know I certainly felt. I will say that because of the limited restaurants that were open, we ended up going to a lot of places we normally don't go to, yeah. which had was great because it, it, it afforded us to experience something different. Which is up next on yeah. the list. It's got, yeah. it's, you're, you're saying the description is amazing with all capital letters. Which oh, one was yeah. that? Topolinos. Everybody's all the cool kids are saying that. Yeah, it it's um, <laughs> it's everything. Uh, it was it's your kind of place, was, huh? It was just it was fantastic. That's in your resort too, right? That was in our resort, which was great. You know, we had but we had hopped over to Abercadow Bar and came back. Um, <laughs> you know, which was actually kind of fun because yeah. it made it feel like I don't know that little bit more special rather than just coming from the room. But it was it you had was to, you had to travel to get there. <laughs> yeah, right. And we kind of went all out because I I wanted to try everything. Um, so we each got our own appetizers that we shared. So I got the duck gnocchi and we got the ricotta, which I know everybody's thinking like. But ricotta, but it's house made, uh, fresh ricotta. Yeah. It's not anything like the stuff you get in the plastic containers <laughs> from the grocery store. Um, <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> and it's served with, you know, baguette. And that'd be a little weird, wouldn't it, Liz? They come up with the <laughs> dump it on you. <laughs> right? Plastic cup. There you go. Right? But it was just, it was fantastic. The duck gnocchi was just. Melt in your mouth, phenomenal. It sounds that way. Um, yeah. It's fancy sounding. Yeah. And then for dinner, I got the chicken rigatoni and Matt got the filet mignon. And both of those were just fantastic. Yeah. Matt said his steak was yeah. perfect, which is saying a lot because he usually always yeah. finds <laughs> something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for him to just say Could, it was perfect, like it was amazing. Couldn't find something. Yeah. You know, and the chicken rigatoni. So, you know, for those that don't know, they make all of their pasta in house. Yeah, that's cool. So again, sure. just that feature alone um, fresh. was, you can tell was the difference, fantastic, huh? yeah. fresh. You yeah. can absolutely tell the difference. And then the chicken is just, it's braised and, you know, in the, mm-hmm. in the sauce all day and just really melt in your mouth. And then we both got the, Desserts to share, which was the Valharona cake, which is this very decadent, um, indulgent chocolate cake. And I got the pistachio mousse, which is very light. So it was actually, it was a nice balance and we, sh- we shared them and it was, it was great. We forgot to give the warning of, to new listeners to this podcast about the food. <laughs> Definitely don't go grocery shopping after our show or. Make sure you've eaten before you listen. Sorry for yep. not giving that warning up front, but you give. Yeah, right. This is one of my guests that come on that give an extensive detail to her meals. <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna no. This is what we want. This is what we ask for this punishment. <laughs> so good. Uh, so everybody, Topolino's is the restaurant, the signature one you got to try. Yeah. Right. It very much reminded me of it had that that um that cruise dining feel to it, Ooh, if good. that makes any sense. I, um, I've never been on a cruise, but I've heard many people say it's all about the food there. Yeah. It it just really had a very special feel to the to the restaurant. It was really nice. All right. We're gonna keep going. Next yeah. day you did Satuli Canteen for lunch. It's a favorite of many people. How did it, how did it work out for you? It was great. Mobile ordering is the way to go. Um, you know, absolutely no weight whatsoever, you know, ordered it up on the bus hit. I'm here once we were within proximity, I'll say, and that's the tip I'll, you know, for any of those who are still newer to the, to the mobile ordering, don't wait until you're literally at the restaurant. Right. Hit the I'm here about five minutes out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as you're walking there. And then like literally every time we did that, just as we were, you know, arriving at the the restaurant, I get the buzzer saying it was yeah. ready. How far in advance do you order to? Um, I mean, usually I would do it 
within an hour of when I knew we would probably be hungry because the, yeah. the time slots are limited. Right. So if you wait too long and it's a more popular place, you might yeah. not get the time slot that you want. Especially the time you're picking. If you're doing like yeah. traditional Cheaper. noontime, you might yeah. want to order a little even earlier. Exactly. Yep. All right. Now we've trained you well. I see like, Nomad Lounge and Tiffin's on the list here. Yeah. That's another yeah. geek and favorites there. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a backstory behind Tiffin. So we've never actually experienced Pandora at night. Okay. And that was a must on our list. So yeah. we had to kind of game the system a little bit, if you will, <laughs> All right. and find a restaurant, make the latest reservation that we could. Okay. And then with the hopes that when we got out of the restaurant, it would be dark and we'd be able to kind of like nice. sneak over, even though the park was officially closed. Oh, good thinking. You so just wanted to see the lights and the sounds yeah. experience yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Good idea. Um, yeah. So we were, we were killing time quite honestly, but in a really great way, um, <laughs> while we were waiting for all of that. So we hit the nomad lounge for, for cocktails and a little snack drinks are always fantastic. And then we got the slider to share and the yucca fries, which were, were really great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good yummies. And, and we had great interaction with the bartender and, and it was, it was a good time. Um, and then we headed over to Tiffin's for dinner. That was our first time at Tiffin's, you know, and the restaurant itself is really interesting, you know, really well themed. We had the bread service, of course. And then I got the short ribs with roasted vegetables and Matt got the shrimp and grits. Oh, my, my short ribs were fantastic, but it was a very small portion okay. to begin with. And then half of my portion was fat. Uh, um, so that was a bit of a disappointing meal All right. Um, for me, but Matt's shrimp and grits was great. And the amount of shrimp that you get uh, is very, very generous. That was a huge, huge portion and a really, really great value for you know, for the price. So that I would highly recommend. Yeah. I don't know that we'll ever, I don't know that we need to go back there. All right. To be honest with you. I was, <laughs> the bread service, is that kind of the same kind of thing like they do over at Sana? So that's a really great question. And I, I, I don't know for sure because I thought I heard that Sana changed their bread service and like trimmed down the number of sauces. Mm. So it could now be exactly the same, Okay, but it was like three sauces, you know, and then the different kinds of, of bread. And it was, it was really great. We've had the bread service at the nomad lounge and, and it was on par with that. The shrimp and grits Margita made for me. And I, I, I remember traveling down South for work and learning about grits. It's not something mm -hmm. we, really it's not a northern thing and i yeah. was like eh, i don't know what is it <laughs> it always intrigued me and then i margita said this shrimp and grits from disney world and i don't remember i don't think it was tiffin's that inspired her i can't remember i want to say it was the grand floridian cafe mm -hmm. was her inspiration but oh my gosh is it got cheese in it right too yes yeah so it good. i mean it Usually the, it's cheesy grits and then there's, you know, depending yeah. on the recipe, there's usually like a spicy or Cajun sauce that's drizzled over it and, you know, on the shrimp. All right. We're into day four. I'm looking for yes. meals that you had there. I see ABC Commissary. I'm curious to hear how you made mm -hmm. out there because I've been praising that place the few times I've been there recently. Yeah. Yeah. It was fantastic. Oh, Again, good. solid, solid, you know, quick service type place. Um, we did the mobile order. I got the shrimp curry bowl and Matt got the buffalo grilled cheese. They were, they were solid, you know. I and, know it. This is so good to hear. What you would expect. It's so um, good. There's, they do have a lot of choices and I've seen them changing them up and yeah. Yeah. Not your typical burgers and fries oh. place now. That's awesome. Oh. I love it. And then you're killing time yeah. and you went to Oga's. How was Oga's? Yes. 
Oga's was was great. It oh, was good. Everything we hoped um, that First it time? would be. Yes. Nice. Yep. It was everything that we hoped that it would be. I got the jet juice. Matt got the Jedi mind trick. We each got a second round of drinks, and I think we changed it up, but mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't write that down. Oh, the first um, one made you forget. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the mind trick, maybe. <laughs> exactly. And then we got the meat board, and that was great. I, I've heard people criticize it and say that it's weird. <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs> Good. I think weird is, is appropriate at Oga's, don't you? Yeah. And, I mean, it wasn't Part all of fun. that weird. Yeah. It, you know, so. yeah, yeah. I, I, that is a unique and fun experience, definitely. Yeah. If you can, yeah. right? Check that yeah. out. It's just like the old Star Wars bar. Yeah. Perfect. I'm looking for your Crystal Palace. Yeah. Yeah. For the yeah. for the evening. Are you are you over at now you're staying over at the Polynesian by this time. Yes. Yep. So, so you went over to the yeah. Which why did you pick Crystal Palace? Um we wanted something close to the Polynesian originally because I wasn't sure how the Hollywood Studios Day was going to play out. Yeah. I had originally made made dinner plans for the Brown Derby. But by the time, you know, we had done everything that we wanted to do. Yeah. And so by the, when we got done with Oga's, like we were, we were done. <laughs> so I switched it tricks. up. Yeah. And, and found there was reservations open for Crystal Palace. So I switched it over to that and yeah. it was good this was the first time you know with the new menu with right. you know the different serving style it was it was good it was it was a really great value for the price yeah um, that's good uh, judy's been talking about it she really likes yeah. the the change up from the yeah. from the buffet she said yeah. I got the fried chicken and the mac and cheese with the collard greens. It was good fried chicken. It was by no means the best I've ever had, okay. um, but it was it was good. And then Matt got the catfish and shrimp. Oh, that's and interesting. He said that it was good. So they had a menu then to choose from. Yeah, Instead you've of, got, I think it's like four different choices and it's like a chicken, a, a, a meat. I think it's like a pot roast, mm. um, not pot roast, um, some kind of meat cut, and then a f the fish, prime and rib? then there's a vegetarian option. Was it prime rib? Yes. Ah, yes. Dang. Boy, I'm see, I'm good. You you know everything. <laughs> no, not really. You play, you play <laughs> clueless, but you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. It's, uh, I had a one star review that said I'm clueless. So. Aww. <laughs> yeah, but we won't talk about that. I I think. Well, it was all you could eat. No. Oh, okay. No, but it's but it's it's like a a package. So it's a flat price that you're paying, and you get an a salad to start that's you know shared yeah, gotcha. for the table. Then you have your entrees, and then it's it's a an assortment of desserts ah, for nice. the table. Yeah. But I mean, it cool. was. It was very generous servings. We left very yeah. full. <laughs> so. As as we often do in these yeah. places. Well, the next day, we're on day five out of ten. <laughs> it speeds up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, you got some great ones on day five. I know. Oh my gosh. We're we're we are killing it. You got homecoming and Kona. Yep. Yep. Two, two great places. Yeah, so we hit we hit homecoming for brunch. This was our first time experiencing their brunch offering. It was awesome. <laughs> it was really great um, cool. all the way around. The what service, makes it what makes it brunch and food. what's different? Is there anything different because it's brunch or Yes. Okay. Um they have more breakfast it's kind of like that, that middle in between, between, you yeah. know, some breakfast elements with more savory kind of lunchish. Yeah, I like that. I think that's accoutrement. So it was really good. We got the deviled eggs. My husband always has to, has to get those and they're, those they're are favorites. Very good. Yeah. yeah. I got the short rib hash and it was <sighs> phenomenal. Yes. I, I love oh corn, like so corned good. beef hash or yeah, uh, roast beef so hash, good. short yeah. rib hash. 
Yep. And I got the Southern Mary, which is kind of like a take on a Bloody Mary. Oh. And it was, it was great. Mm. It was really, really good. Judy loves um, her. Really nicely spiced. Nice. Um, I like a spicy Mary. So it was, it nice. was really good. And Matt got the Hallelujah biscuits. So basically it was one of their homemade biscuits with, you know, egg on top and some ham and, and sauce. Oh, that sounds really good. Hallelujah. Yeah. It was, it was really good. I wish we had that, you know, in our backyard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's have that right now, Liz. Yeah. <laughs> Kona, just run down quick. <laughs> Kona, I think Kona Cafe was the only restaurant you had because at the, at the resort besides the quick serve, right? Yeah. Captain Cook and Kona Cafe were the only restaurants open. I mean, and that's to say the only other restaurant really is <laughs> Ohana. Oh, yeah. And then they've got what they did was Kona's has kind of adopted the menu of, of the, the, the bar, the, the sushi bar and stuff. They yeah. added that in. So you're honestly, you're not missing any of the assortment. And I will also say that Kona's menu, at least when we were there, it also had a lot of the, the entrees and and the food offerings from Ohana. Oh, so I see again, pot stickers, which is really one of my favorites. Anything. Yeah. yeah. We got the pot stickers to as our appetizer, which those are exactly what you you usually get at Ohana. Yeah. That's good. I got the surf and turf sushi, which was fantastic. Matt got a steak special that they were that they were having and you know, you can never go wrong with a steak at Disney. Um, <laughs> I've never been disappointed. No. And then what a lot of people don't know is that for dine in at Kona Cafe and it's not posted anywhere, mm -hmm. you can get the Ohana bread pudding. <laughs> so well, we now that. the Geek and family knows. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Yeah. We've been having, we've been sad about the menu that has been announced for. Really? For, well, I'm for, excited for, for uh, it. For Ohana? Yeah. Really? Why? I'm really excited. I think that they did a fantastic job with keeping fan favorites while adding in new new pieces like the shrimp casserole mm. really intrigues me. Well, I hope that you're right. Like that would be really good. It's very controversial, um, so I'm glad to hear someone who's excited for it. People need to be more open to change. <laughs> well, they don't want to lose their bread pudding <laughs> list. That yeah, bread pudding, I mean, tell you, gets a lot of raving reviews. The bread pudding is fantastic. I will tell you, I enjoyed it more from Kona Cafe because I was not roll me away stuffed. Yeah. Like usually by the time that Ohana did the bread pudding <laughs> comes out, like yeah. I take one bite and I'm like, I know. I'm going to puke if I eat anymore. <laughs> so it's so I, hard. I'm, not, I know. I'm honestly not that yeah. sad about it because I can never really enjoy it anyway. What about the pineapple bread and the macadamia nut butter? <laughs> Again, it's it's great, but <laughs> the food, I always would struggle with not eating too much of it because that fills you up and it keeps you away from enjoying <laughs> the, the other foods. The pot stickers so, and the, the noodles. Yeah. All right. Kona Cafe for breakfast, too. So, you, yep. so, you're, so you're there for dinner and then you went you're for back breakfast. Back to back. <laughs> <laughs> you really needed to eat breakfast, huh? You yep, had yep. to go back for more. Yeah. Sometimes you have a big meal at night. You're like, I don't think I need to eat till like three o'clock. <laughs> yeah. You're doing yeah. great though. We how, was, how was their we breakfast? Were. It's always good. Matt got the macadamia nut pancakes, yeah. um, which he always gets and, and loves. They had a special, which is what I got for breakfast. And it was eggs with biscuits and gravy. Again, it was like the homemade biscuits and you know uh, like a sauce a southern sausage gravy over eggs over easy and it, it was great then you went over to epcot and hit yes. some more booths tell me more of your booth food Whew. you got oh, a lot yeah. here we did <laughs> i can fit a lot in my belly <laughs> <laughs> i think it, this was like your dinner pretty much and I mean, lunch and dinner yeah so keep in mind like we got to Epcot around 
11 when World Showcase opened. And like, this was a day long event <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of breaks in between this, the week that we were there, they were having a near record breaking heat wave. Oh. It was on average 90 mm. plus degrees with close to a hundred percent humidity oh, wow. every day. So, which I was, I loved, I was, I love the heat, but like it, what I liked about it is it forced you to slow down okay. and, and move at a different pace. Um, so yeah. and world showcase is a great place to do that during a festival, right? It is. <laughs> so we hit honey bistro, um, bistro, um, <laughs> and got the lavender honey marinated <laughs> chicken flatbread. That sounds really um, good. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. We had gotten that a couple of years ago and it stuck in our mind. It's, it's yeah. really great. It's, wonderful to share. It's not too heavy, great yeah. flavors. And Let's then start. we got the first magnitude honeybee citrus blonde ale, which is just a nice kind of fresh, clean, light beer. You got six yeah. adjectives for a beer on that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> only, only the festivals at Epcot can do that. Exactly. Even the, like the, the the, the flatbread, lavender, honey, mustard, marinated chicken flatbread. It's like yeah. you, got, you have to have six adjectives for the food. It limits the need for a description because they told you everything that's in it. <laughs> yeah, ain't it great? Yep. All right, keep um, going. Yeah, we hit the Jardin de Fiesta, which was the, the Mexican uh, booth, and we got the Tostada de conchinita nice job um, with that what, what, what is that <laughs> that was it was basically like a, a huge case or not huge but like a, a small quesadilla almost uh, love a quesadilla is, nice is why don't they just the say closest so thing i can describe <laughs> it to um which people are probably screaming at me like saying yeah. that i'm insulting mexican <laughs> cuisine but that's that's my americana <laughs> yeah description um we we got the taco vampire vampiro um which was my favorite it was fantastic and then i got the garden margarita which was was good all right good. you're doing awesome here yeah we picked up the pineapple skier at the refreshment outpost as we were mm. we were cruising by I love pineapple. and that was just matt wanted it out of curiosity and basically it's like pineapple on a skewer and then they they rolled it in like a like a chili salt oh to add a little bit of swipe, spice to counteract the the sweetness of the pineapple yeah. it was good oh, all right i love pineapple you have to be careful though don't breathe in as you're taking a bite or oh. you're going to choke on the salt <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. It's just like the sugared powder, right? <laughs> yeah. It sneaks up on you. <laughs> La Isla Fresca. Yes. That's a lamb curry there. So where um, are we? We're in, are we like in Morocco? Where is that? I think that's where that was, was kind of like in, in yeah. it or near Morocco. Okay. And these might be a little bit out of order, but. All right. No, don't worry. Hit them all. Yeah. Um, we got the lamb curry there, the sugarcane shrimp skewer, <laughs> the tropical moose cup. <laughs> this was just gluttonous. Um, the <laughs> Ivanhoe. <laughs> We're not judging. <laughs> the Ivanhoe Park Brewing Company's hibiscus guavacation sour beer. I count like and eight adjectives there. So that's. <laughs> The sour beer was, I love sour beers. What is a sour beer? I never heard of it. It's just that. It's yeah. a little bit less carbonated. Oh. So it, it almost feels like it's a little bit flat. It's usually like a, like a lighter or like a pale yeah. ale kind of. And then it's, it's just that it's sour. It's, <laughs> it, it has a sour element yeah. to it. Who would ever thought they could do so much with beer? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it was really, really good. Sugar cane shrimp skewer, I was not a fan of. Uh, it was really, really sugary? sweet. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I was I was not a fan of Yeah, I don't of think that. of sugar with shrimp. Yeah. Okay. Um, the lamb curry was really good, though. 
I always had a fear of lamb until I, I went to the Moroccan pavilion, just the regular quick serve, and I'm a huge fan now. Like, they spice it just perfectly. I don't I always think, I don't know why. I don't know where, where my weird uh, fear of that came from. But, yeah, it, it's fun to kind of carve it off that skewer or thing. <laughs> yeah. So we had a complete Wally World moment. Somehow, like, <laughs> it was just impossible to kind of keep up with all the changes that were happening leading up to the trip. Just because mm. right before we went, it was literally daily things were were changing yes. at, at yeah. Disney. Everywhere, um, right. And so we went, when we got to Morocco, we usually always go and get our, you know, olive salad and, <laughs> you know, our, our kefta pockets and all of that stuff. Yeah. And it was closed. Oh, I think I, I now that you say that, yeah. Completely missed that. And like, we're standing there and like, there's literally a sign that says, sorry, folks, we're closed. <laughs> oh. And like, it was just a complete Wally world moment. Like we're sitting yeah. there staring at the sign, like going, what? Like, you know, we came don't, all the way here and it's closed. Don't, don't you think that's, you know what? That, that just tells me that's an underrated yeah. quick serve. Don't you think? Yeah. It it's really, really good, right? It's so good. Yeah, and I, my my wife used to tell me that all the time, and for so long I was I had a fear of going there because of my fear of the lamb. <laughs> I guess the too exotic for me or something. And one of my listeners talked about the olive salad and how you could get two portions of olive salad. Not what it that is. It was me. It was. A, I, I swap out the fries. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you guys. I told I talked to Liz all the time. Yeah, you probably were my the one that talked me into that. Yeah. I love those little vinegary things and salads. Yeah. So, nope. man, I'm so glad. Thank you so much for that. Because yeah. you know, next to the Mexican Pavilion, I think that's like my next favorite. Well, it is now the American Pavilion's got the the barbecue Regal Eagle. Regal yeah. Eagle so, my gosh, yeah. just, just the regular stuff at Epcot World yeah. Showcase. I love. Yeah. All right. Well, I see yeah. American Bench. I just just to take a break from food because I'm like yeah. bloated now. The American <laughs> Adventure. You went for the first time. What'd you think of the show? I thought it was really fantastic. Awesome. I really did. I was impressed with it. You know, we went because full disclosure, we were melting at that point. Um, <laughs> air conditioning time. And I'm like, this is an easy 30 minutes of air conditioning. Uh, all right. Um, be honest. Did you take a nap or did you watch the whole show? I watched the whole show. Well, I, was, I was expecting to fall asleep. Um, nah, Cause you got a full and, belly and it's hot and you're yeah. right. I get and, it. But I didn't. It Good kept for me you. engaged. I love that. And they do have right now, in honor or celebration of the 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 movie Soul, the Pixar movie Soul, they oh. have a, a like a a tribute to jazz history. Oh, okay, cool. In the lobby, yeah, yeah, yeah. of American Pavilion, that's oh, cool. really great, and they've got like Louis Art Armstrong's trumpet. Oh, awesome! In there and some really great yeah, like um, museum artifacts. kind of stuff. That's cool. Oh, great use of the, yep. the space. And, you yep. know, I was just, I don't know what made me think of this, but was there a lot of entertainment? Did you were able to do any, because while well, I think of American Venture, I think of the Voices of Liberty, which I absolutely love. Was there any entertainment going on in World Showcase? So Voices of Liberty is still performing, but they're performing in the amphitheater yep. across the way. Yep, I saw them so there. you still get to hear them. You still get to see them. It's yeah. just in a different. Yep. I really enjoyed, way. I really enjoyed that. But yeah. I watched that twice. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. I just missed my Epcot Entertainment because it's a little light right now, right? Yeah, it is. Hopefully they pick that up. Light. All right. All right. Well, okay. Hit me Hit me with the Spice Road table. You know, this is a jo running joke on the podcast. We just, yeah. Mom and Judy and I just talked about it. I talked about the things that I've always wanted to do and never have done. And this is the number one. Do it. <laughs> Quit Score some strong arm. Quit messing go around. By yourself, <laughs> go by yourself. Like do whatever you need to do. Go <laughs> I should take your advice. I know you've never steered me wrong. Yeah, what's no? It was really what's good great. there. What if I go there? What should I have? So we got an assortment of. So let me preface it by this: um, for walk up, and you can get on their wait list on the app. 
you're able to kind of sit in the bar area, which is that outside seating area. Uh -huh. And the menu is a lot of small bites. So we got like three different appetizers and shared them, um, along with, you know, I had a really nice, great, uh, glass of, of white wine and Matt, I think got a beer. I got the, the lamb balls, which were basically like meatballs, but with lamb, oh. um, very reminiscent of the kefta from, you know, from the quick service, uh -huh. um, was really, really great. We got like a, a dipping sauce appetizer that had like the olive salad and, and yeah. a couple of the other dipping sauces. It was really great. You can't go wrong with anything that you get there. Is honestly. there like an entree here or is this just like small plates? What's so the what is, how would you describe all? Have, I think they still have the entrees, but that you have to do reservations for. Okay. And we didn't make reservations for it. So this so. is like happy hour at the bar. Yeah. Kind of food. Yeah. But the, but the, the difference is their, their bar area is that outside fenced in patio area uh, yeah. on the water. Oh, okay. So like you get to people watch and you know, you have yeah. the water there. You're not like stuck inside a building. All right. I got to do it. Yeah. What's a butterfly house? So over as you're heading towards, um, the land pavilion. Yeah. They have the butterfly house set up. Oh, you know, I don't know why that threw me. I love that. I always yeah. love them. That. You know, that's it's one of the reasons. It's tucked away because yeah. of all of the construction. Usually uh, that's over kind of more in the main area. Ah, uh, yeah. But, and so it's tucked away a little bit over on the side. I love going, wandering, checking out that. That's that's one, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why. Did you say Flower and Garden was your favorite now? Or you didn't, you didn't want to claim I that? I think it's, it's possibly leaning towards that. Yeah. I have an affinity for food and wine, but it's been so long. It's but you love of, flowers and yeah. the outdoors and gardens and stuff too, right? Right. So, yeah, I could, I could yeah. see the quandary there, yeah. <laughs> the struggle, yeah. not that, not that you have to pick one or the other. You can go to both. No. No. <laughs> All right. Let's go to day seven. Yes. So this was, we were back at tower. Um, I'm sorry, Hollywood studios. This was kind of more focusing and just kind of hitting all of the, I'll say old rides, the traditional rides as we were there, we did get, uh, Ronto Roasters for breakfast. Yeah, what'd you um, think? It was good. It was, uh, you know. Yeah, this little sandwich thing. This little sandwich thing. I mean, it was good. It was there. <laughs> it was convenient. I don't know that I'm going to be racing back going, right. like, man, yeah. I need that again. Yeah, I got you. Um, but it was good. And, well, we got to talk about this because I see it right in front of me. You built a droid. I did. I did. How was that? It was a lot of fun. Oh, good. It was a lot of fun. Are you still fun. playing with your droid? Um, not <laughs> as often as I should. BB's sitting over there, actually. You got the BB-8? Um, yeah, I did. What'd you build? Um, honestly, parts. like, I was really lame, and I'm, <laughs> um, I, I wanted BB-8, so I built BB-8. <laughs> oh, right out of the movie. <laughs> Didn't. Right out of the movie. My husband was like, you know, you can just get that in a pre-done box. And I'm like, but I didn't build it. <laughs> Stayed true to the movie. All right. Yeah. That's yep. fun. I'm glad you had yeah. a good experience there. We did. Uh -huh. We did. We That was on May the 4th, and we kind of got in and out of Star Wars land as fast as possible, to be quite honest, because it was already, it was like 930 in the morning, and it was already yeah. packed to the gills. And hot. All right. Yeah. Well, you did another one. You did one one that I really want to do. It's on that same list, that the Spice Road table. I love, I don't know if you made a spelling mistake, you Plighty Pig. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Plighty Pig. <laughs> I like that better. That should be the name. That's fine. We're the Polite Pig. What, what do you oh. eat there at the Polite Pig? So, because we wanted to try a little bit of everything, we got the Butcher Board, which Ooh. has a little bit of everything. Ooh, that sounds yes. cool. What's on? Well, yeah, what is that? Like a charcuterie board? Um, it's, it's basically, it's, it's made to serve two to four people. Ooh. And it has a little bit of, you know, the different meat cuts. A little bit of the Barbecue. chicken. It comes with 
uh, the cornbread. It comes with two sides that you can pick. And so it's, it's kind of the best of everything. Oh, should I go there sometime? Absolutely. <laughs> I will go back there in a second. It was phenomenal. Wow. Great prices. Wonderfully flavored food. And um, they got some good drinks really there, too. They got a nice bar there, too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Beers and stuff. And Yep. Cool. Yeah, I got a really great whiskey drink. I forget what Matt got. But it was it was really good. We'll absolutely go back there again. And this is one of my newfound favorites, Wine Bar George. I've had some great yeah. moments there. Yeah. What do you we like need about to go back there and give it another try? Oh, it didn't go um, good. No, it's not that it didn't go well. It was just we didn't have reservations. We kind of walked up and we were like, "Hey, do you have room? Can you fit us in?" And they should have said no. <laughs> but they said yes, uh, and they sat us upstairs on the little outside patio. Oh. But keep in mind, that was a day that it was like 95 and sunny. Oh, you were right in and, the sun? And we were right in the sun, and we were the only ones out there. We just, that's, you know, we went out for, with Judy and Ken last, what was it? What was the reason? Oh, their anniversary. We were in Canton. That you you know what I'm talking about, yeah. and that they call it the 110 Grill now. We're mm -hmm. like, oh, it was a beautiful evening in the sun, but we were right in the sun. Yeah, it kind of definitely dampered. It did, uh, and I wish that they had just said no. Yeah, or or given us an option because by the time we sat down and yeah. like realized like this is horribly unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we had the same experience recently back home here. That's funny. Yeah, like it would have been really yeah. awkward. Was that to, your first time there? We have to go. It was. Oh uh, yeah, give it a chance again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we absolutely want to give it another another chance. Um, What's your favorite lounge at Disney Springs? Then you were at Jack Lindsay's. Of course, you had a bad experience at wine. That, that's not fair to Wine Bar George. Yeah, no, it, it, it absolutely was. There's no judgment whatsoever. Like, you yeah. definitely want to go back and try it. Honestly, for lounges, um, out of what we've experienced, I would say Jack Lindsay's. I'm really interested in what's still on my list to want to try is the upstairs lounge at Paddlefish. Okay. And so that could end up taking that spot, but right now it's Jack Lindsay's. How about all of property? Abracadabra, without a question. Really? Yeah. I'm a little bit shocked by that. What 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 there is that your favorite? We've every time we go, it's unique, different, solid drinks. Uh-huh. Yes. Um for sure. And and fantastic service cast interactions oh. and attention do they do the magic trick shtick kind of thing because no like we just we have like yeah. genuine conversations with the bar staff nice and like this last time that we were there for my second drink i'm like what's not on the menu like on a secret menu or something that, uh -huh. that you would recommend. I want to try something different. And he was like, well, what do you like? And I'm like, I like dry, clean, crisp drinks, like not anything sugary or, or anything like that. And he's like, all right, let me think about it. And like, he created something and it was the varnoosh, I think it was called. And like, it's this drink that was apparently popular back in like the forties uh -huh. and it's bourbon based uh -huh. and it was phenomenal. Oh, cool. Um, so it, it's just always been a really great, I'm great so experience. I'm so glad to hear that. Cause I love the boardwalk. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go into day eight. I'm going to go right to dinner. I'm going yep. I want to know about the Plaza restaurant. I was just on a zoom call. We were talking about the Plaza with, um, Selena and Jackie. And they mm -hmm. weren't that impressed. Really? Yeah. So tell me. <laughs> what'd you think? I mean, so I thought it was really great. It it honestly it warmed my heart. It's right. it's very traditional, non greasy, like diner food. <laughs> um, is right. is the best that I can <laughs> I, I can kind of That's such a thing, huh? As. Yeah. <laughs> And I thought it was, it was fantastic. The caveat to that is I think I enjoyed it as much as I did because of the limited seating. 
Okay. Because of the social distancing, I could imagine how busy and chaotic it is at full full capacity. Yeah. I don't know that I would have enjoyed it that much yeah. under those circumstances. The other thing that I think they have room for improvement on is the reservation management. So even though I had a reservation, I still ended up waiting like 20 minutes. And that seemed to be the norm based on kind of what I was hearing and seeing around me. Yeah. And I think it's just because people lounge in there as they're eating and maybe the reservation system doesn't recognize the average turnover rate. And maybe it's been tough during the COVID time to figure that all out too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I had the tomato bisque, which was phenomenal, <laughs> a triple decker turkey sandwich with fries, which it was great for, you know, yeah. what it is. Um, it, it was really great. And then I got the strawberry milkshake for dessert and, and it was awesome. All right. Good to hear all that. And yeah. I'm interested in actually this next one for dinner you did. Paddlefish. Yep. That's one I've yes. never done. I had reservations there one time. What would you it think of paddlefish? <laughs> completely underrated. Oh, really? Completely underrated. How come? Um, because you really, I, I feel like you don't really hear a lot about it. I feel like everything that you hear is about Boathouse. Yeah. We've been to Boathouse. Yeah. I was not impressed with Boathouse at all. All right. And Paddlefish, it was just, it was fantastic. Great staff, wonderful atmosphere, fantastic food. Is it on the water? I'm trying yes. to. Yeah. yeah, it's the big boat. Yeah, and it is on the water, right? Then, so you can yep. see the lake and stuff too. So, good. depending on where you sit, yes. yeah, so you can see a good yep. view. Yeah. All right. What'd you have for food? So, um, for appetizers, I got the blue crab ceviche, and Matt got the crab cake with fried green tomatoes. Yummy. Um, both were fantastic. The blue crab ceviche is fresh made oh, to wow. order, wow. so it's not sitting around, ah. and you could tell how fresh it was. It was really, really great. I love some good seafood. Yeah. And then Matt got the whole main lobster, <laughs> which was done... Per, to perfection like it was just it was really good sometimes you know how when you order lobster and it's like a little bit spongy or okay yeah. not quite right this yeah. was was perfect and i got the stuffed cod with scallop and shrimp that sounds that's all sounds really good. i'm yeah. glad to hear yeah a good meal nope. at paddlefish yeah i think we're near the end of this food you extravaganza are. you are i don't know that i've ever done a full podcast melissa <laughs> doing just food practically but i'm okay with it if you are <laughs> i'm good with it <laughs> i think my audience will be too i'm looking here at one thing i want well what would you think of cosmic rays let's go from paddlefish to cosmic rays what a yeah again solid oh good fast food you know quick service place all um, right Mobile order was perfect. I got a Greek salad with chicken strips. Generous size. The chicken strips were fantastic. You know, really high quality chicken. Matt got the bacon cheeseburger. He said that it was really, really good. It, it was really great. We definitely go back if we're, you know, looking for a quick. All right. Quick good meal. to know. Well, I'm going to finish up. I think unless you've. Unless I missed some, an important one, but the La Hacienda San Angel. Yeah. So we did finally make it there for dinner. We've had, that's one where we've had reservations a few times and canceled, but we actually made it there this time. This is the one on the uh, outside of the pyramid, right? In the, yes. Uh, this outside on the water. On the water, right. Yeah. In behind the quick service. Exactly. All right. Yep. I've heard always heard um, raving reviews of this. How did you make out? It was really good. Um, very generous food servings. Yep. We got a giant barbacoa tostada, which was basically kind of like a quesadilla, you know, filled with, with the, the, that wonderful barbacoa shredded meat. Yeah. And that was great. I got like a flank. Um, I'm sorry. I got the pork dish and then Matt got the flank steak and mm. you know they serve it with rice and beans and you know yeah. all of those yeah. really great sides yeah. both were generous servings really really good food 
It was really, really great. I'm glad that we were able to go. I'm glad that we were able to experience it with limited capacity. Yeah. This is another one where I think at full capacity, we probably wouldn't enjoy it quite as much because you could tell people are probably on top of each other, but it was, it was really, really good. <laughs> I love Mexican food. I got, that's another one I've, I've not done that I would yeah. really love to do. Yeah. Uh, I just got one thing caught my eye here. I think we've, we've gotten through the food. <laughs> Outstanding job there. That was a lot of fun. Although, you know what? I'm going to meet Judy and Ken for lunch. Not, we're leaving here at like 11. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like debating. Should I go like charge the refrigerator? Or should, <laughs> how am I going to make this time between this and lunchtime yeah. now? The last bullet point says Polynesian mountaintop. Yeah. What the world is a mountaintop at Polynesian? Or what I'm, so. Yeah. So when you're kind of on the water side, um, a little bit past the beach, if like you're walking towards um, the transportation and ticket center, yeah. on the left hand side, there's this little walkway that most people miss yeah. um, that goes up this little tiny mountain or hill, if you will. Yeah. Um, and there's a bench up there and it's the perfect view of the seven seas lagoon you can actually it's like dead on center with the castle at magic kingdom you can kind of see the grand floridian to the left and it's just it's a really nice quiet kind of off the beaten path spot to just kind of sit and reflect usually that's where we sneak off to to watch the fireworks um yeah and so it's just a nice little quiet spot i i seem to remember you telling me about this spot yeah. when we we're talking about the polynesian and the bungalows are right right in front of you but yes. it's up high it's it's not really a, a mountain's probably not a best you can see over yeah them. yeah it's like a rise you wouldn't even know is a rise that yes. you can see over them right yes yep that's a great explanation of something somebody might miss. Yeah. For sure. You know, I mean, it's I, for somebody who's, who goes to Disney as often as I do, it, it was interesting to go under these circumstances. It was wonderful to be there and you still get the Disney fix. Yeah. But I will say that what was missing was glaring to me, you okay. know, like the fireworks at night that was, was yeah. glaring to me. Yeah. And then some of the other things that they've had to take away, like the street atmosphere and, and things like that. I will say that you can also feel the cuts that they've had to make to maintenance staff, which I don't know that everybody would appreciate. Like mm. you are starting to see and feel a little bit of that, that wear and tear. Like I noticed on the Grand Floridian, you know how on all the peaks they have the white lights? Mm, yeah. And there was a lot of them that were out. Oh, you, that, and you would yeah. never see that before. Yeah, right. You know, and just little things like that. And so I guess the point of that, it's not to focus on, on the negative, but it's, it's for those that this is your first time, realize this is a unique experience, pros and cons. The pros of lower crowds and you're getting to experience things in a very different way than what it'll feel like next year. But then also realize that you're not getting that full magic experience that yeah. you might otherwise. Just goes to show yeah. our appreciation of so many extras yeah. that you're you're alluding to yeah. that we kind of took for granted. Yeah. The, the other the other interesting thing because I'm I'm a people watcher is Everybody, I think a little bit of it is to do with, you know, kind of COVID and, and people being isolated and moving to a more electronic world. Yeah. But then also, I think some of it is to do with how dependent Disney's made us on the Disney app. Mm -hmm. because you have to schedule everything through there. You've got to do your mobile ordering through there mm -hmm. that the number of people that I saw just walking through the park, staring at their phone and missing <laughs> everything around them yeah. was 
shocking yeah. to me. And I even noticed it with like, I always make it a point to say hello and acknowledge the cast members that are standing at like the entrance to the lines of rides or throughout the rides to say thank you as I'm exiting a ride and, you know, acknowledging those cast members. And the number of times that I saw cast members like startled because they realized I would, I was speaking to them. <laughs> um, you know, like it made me feel good because I was acknowledging them and they were, uh-huh. they were feeling recognized and I was genuinely saying thank you. Right. But like, it also made me sad that like, I think we've lost a little mm. something in that and that's not happening quite as often as it used to. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great point in this electronic world, not to yeah. forget to, uh, to look up, to look at, yeah, to look yeah, up, just to take some things. time and yeah. start looking instead of your phone, look, yeah. <laughs> look around, yeah. talk to people. Don't, don't forget that. Inter- yeah. We've been working from home and we're not yeah. seeing people in person. Well, we got to get back to that. And, yeah. Well, you yeah. start, you're already off on your own without me asking, but any, interesting pixie dust moments or fun stories from this trip oh pixie dust moments honestly like i would say just those unique interactions and moments with cast members that's what really stuck out to me the most like the interactions and the conversation that we had with with the bartender the cast member at abracadabra and just those those intimate moments i really really enjoyed those i missed those what did you think what what was your impression of the cast members during this time what did you, what was the vibe you were getting from them positive um, were they yeah what was did you feel any different? Yes. I think, I think there's an interesting divide. I think that there's those that are extraordinarily appreciative and happy to be there, to be working and to have us there. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's some that are, are, are tired mm-hmm. and frustrated by, um, <laughs> by the situation. Yeah. Um, I heard a lot of, a lot of, um, cast members grumbling to each other Mm -hmm. and in front of or in public or on stage. Yeah. And that's something that is just a huge no, no. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that very rarely I've I've seen it, but it's been rare for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it it was a lot. Um, and then even just, there was moments where they shared it with me and I was, I was empathetic to them and, and stuff. But at the same time, in the back of my head, I'm like, Oh, you're not supposed to be doing this. Um, you know, like at the Polynesian, I went to try to see if they could keep us in the same room that we were in instead of making us have to switch over because of the reservation snafu. And she was the, the woman, um, at the reception desk was telling me how, you know, she's really frustrated. Like I didn't even ask this. Like she just, like vented to me. She was like, we're really frustrated because we're working at quarter staff and, you know, we're, we're being asked to work, you know, longer shifts than we normally work. But our, our colleagues that haven't been called back yet are actually making more than we're making because of the added, you know, dollars to the unemployment. And I'm just like, like, I totally get that. And it's frustrating, but I was like, yeah, my gosh, (laughs) it is, it is, has, has been a tough road yeah. no doubt i appreciate your yeah. honesty there and I, I don't know let's i'm gonna finish up unless you got some really good more stuff you want to bring because i was just thinking yeah. you're such a great planner any yeah. any tips or thoughts in your planning i would say um <laughs> You've got to be even more nimble today um, than in the past because not only are things changing, you know, as as things open back up, like in advance of your trip, but even during your trip. <laughs> I know. Um, and so just be really nimble. Um, and I would say slow down. Yeah. Slow down, put the phone away, and just be in the moment. Yeah. Um you know, and, and don't look the one, the one thing I really did love is 
that there were no fast passes for the majority of the rides that we went on. It was the first time. And I mean, I've been going to Disney a long time Yeah, that this was the first time that I was going through the queues. <laughs> And there is so much to take in. There yeah. is so much beauty in the queues. Disney does a phenomenal job of making the turnstiles as long as they are so that you are constantly moving. It might be slow, yeah. but you're, you're very rarely, if ever, like just standing still. And so don't, don't think about what you're missing with that. Think about what you're gaining. Oh my gosh. I could talk all day with you. I miss you. Yeah, I know. I know. We got to talk Disney more often. I know. <laughs> you have been so awesome to come yeah. on. And now, except I'm starving to death, but I hope, I I'm so. sure I'll survive. I, I, <laughs> I've got a few pounds to lose, so it's not a bad thing. When are you going back? Um, I'm trying to figure that out right now. I'm, I'm, I'm. Thinking, I'm trying to make it work so that I can get there for the Geekin gathering. Oh, what? Um, oh, that's great! I hope. Yeah. Don't tease me. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to make that work, but if not, I'd really like to get there again for a food and wine festival as well. So. Oh, oh, good. oh maybe for the fiftieth then. Yeah. Kind of beginning um, of the fiftieth. Yeah. We'll see. All we'll right. See. So. Well, it's been so awesome to talk to you. Yeah. Don't be a stranger, all right? I will not be, and don't be a stranger right back. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your, your lunch, and we'll, yeah. we'll talk soon. Have a great weekend, kiddo. You too. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Well, once again, it's just so great to talk to Liz. She does a great job taking notes and describing all of those restaurants and foods. Love talking to Liz. Can't wait to hear. I hope she gets to go to G3. Well, I got to tell you right away, we've been some people asking about what are the dates for G3? What is G3? Well, it's the Grand Geek and Gathering, February 3rd through the 6th of next year, 2022, Thursday. Book your, your parks, February 3rd, Animal Kingdom. Friday, February 4th, Hollywood Studios. Saturday, February 5th, Magic Kingdom. That's what we'll do the Kessler Run. We'll have some games and and fun activities, not too many, just a few to make getting together a little bit more fun. Sunday is the big day. Love to see you in Epcot. February 6th, Epcot will get the big picture. Have a few frozen lime margaritas and some nachos over at the Mexican Pavilion, but I can't wait to see everybody that's coming down to the Grand Geek Gathering. We call it the, the G3. I was really Excited to see a, a great iTunes review just came in just before I was recording. It says, the podcast is great. The community is better. This is a fantastic Disney podcast that was started with the idea of creating community among Disney fans. Not only is the Geek and Podcast wildly entertaining, but the community that has been fostered here is second to none. That is fantastic. So thank you, Captain7391, for that iTunes review. I really appreciate it. Thanks for acknowledging the amazing listeners who participate and make this geek and family so awesome. Great intro from my friend Heather Brainerd and Heather did that one about a year or more ago. And I'd love to hear some more geekin intros. You can create one for us too. It's fun. All I can suggest is telling us your name, where you're from, a fun Disney World fact about yourself, then you go geeking on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole geeking family. Record them on your phone, send them any way you can, video, audio recording. There's lots of audio programs on those phones these days. Email them to me, kurt.stone at geeking on WDW.com. I'll try to get them on the podcast. When we kick off the show, oh my gosh, I, I am so excited and grateful for all the support I get through Patreon.com. This is a website where you can go and pledge a monthly donation to our show. You can even do an annual pledge there now. And I appreciate you guys so much. I have been releasing audio recordings there that are exclusive to those who support us on Patreon.com. You can hear all of the old G3 recordings. I've finished up putting those out there. I'm doing weekly the Zoom calls that we do every Wednesday. We usually have some kind of talk topic or we're talking about the recent events going on at Disney World. Maybe someone that's like Travis that was just at the, the parks recently. So a lot of fun conversations and I 
record those and put those out on my patreon.com account and feed that's easy to pick up on your podcast app also this week i got a recording coming out it's a trip report that i did with amanda lamb i'll get that out to you guys hopefully during the week this week and again thanks for being patreon supporters and pledging a donation to the show and you know mom and auntie judy they are working hard they are at the traveling tiers at gmail.com thanks for booking your trips with mom and judy they love working with you guys and helping you out and don't forget, you could always book your own trip and then transfer that booking to us. I don't know that we've had one of those in a while. I know Mom and Judy have been doing lots of work on the phones with Disney. I hear them all the time. There were a bunch of changes because all the recent resorts being opened up. And, and they'll look out for that best deal for you. If you book with us and some promotion comes out from Disney World, they will get you on that automatically. Well, we are committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacation. Just reach out to me if you'd like to do a trip report. Maybe book a trip, review your plans for your trip. You can email me at kurt.stone at geekin on WDW.com. Thanks for going geekin on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you, geeks. Have a magical day and week. And I hope all your dreams come true. Oh.